YouTube, how's it freaking going? Hope your guys' day's going well. And hope you guys had a phenomenal week so far because today is Wednesday, which means we're halfway through the week. Have you guys been doing what you need to be doing? It is fucking pouring again. Again, it keeps freaking raining. The rain definitely puts a frown on my face, but I won't lie, guys. I also find it a bit motivating because it is an excuse. It's an excuse to not do things. An excuse to not go for a run. An excuse to not go to the gym. It's an excuse for a lot of things. And hopefully the rain hitting the car isn't overpowering everything else. But I have noticed, okay? I took a little second here to look at my videos on YouTube. I've noticed the videos aren't doing very well in terms of the viewership and whatnot. And, you know, why I'm saying this is not necessarily to push them to do better, but of course, hey, if you guys want to drop a like, a comment, it definitely helps. But it's because sometimes you're not going to see the results to the work you're putting in immediately, right? And similarly with the gym, I can't expect to see results after a month or a week, perhaps a little bit after a month, but you can't expect results immediately. And that kind of transfers into what I've been talking about before, which is the outcome versus the process goal. Right? Is my outcome goal to get a million views on a video? Sure. But that is not necessarily achievable without taking the steps required to it. So what I need to focus is focus on is the process towards it. So obviously, if the videos aren't performing well, I need to make better videos. I need to learn how to make better videos. I gotta do better edits. I gotta do better this. But why I'm saying that is because that applies in a lot of elements in life, guys. We can't always just focus on the outcome. We have to focus on the process, tangible goals, goals that we can work on today, steps that we can follow and do every single day to get us closer towards it. And you can't always get stuck up in not being where you wanna be. You gotta focus on where you've came, right? And if you guys haven't seen my Instagram, if you guys don't follow it, definitely follow it. See Project Go Fit. It's in the description below. But I posted a nice little reel showing where I was four years ago. And the progress in that alone inspires the fuck out of me. Because I can only imagine where I'll be in four years while I continue. I was going to say if I continue, but while I continue. Because you guys hearing it right now, I ain't fucking stopping. I'm going to continue doing this shit till I die. Because I want to inspire someone. And hey, I get like 30 views on a video. If I could touch 30 people's lives, that to me is a blessing. If anything more, it's even more of a blessing. But at the end of the day, it's all about making people better and making myself better and holding you guys accountable, but also holding myself accountable through you guys. Because at the end of the day, sometimes it makes your, you know, it makes things a lot easier when you have an accountability partner. But today is back of biceps. My shoulder's still sore, guys. Feeling a bit better though. The main thing I feel when I get sore, and it's funny because anytime I get in the car, I gotta go reach behind me into my bag to grab, grab the camera. And just doing that puts a little tension right here. So obviously, I, I guess it's kind of those movements, perhaps the chest, maybe it might work a little bit there, but uh, probably not do deltoids, specifically deltoid flies, because I feel like the deltoid flies are actually what might have injured it doing the one arm. So, I mean, I don't know if I did it wrong or whatnot. Maybe I did a little too much weight. Maybe I just fought through an injury uh, or a little pain that I was feeling, which is definitely a possibility because your boy was being silly sometimes. Don't fall in those footsteps, but we're going to work around what we can, right? It's biceps and back. So if, if it does start to feel a little fatigued, then obviously I'm going to have to mitigate the amount of usage on it, depending on the exercise. I know lat pull downs do work it a bit, so I'll probably just go a little bit lighter on the lat pull downs, still get a bit of stimulus out of it. I won't be working close to fatigue though, or sorry, to failure if my shoulder's sore, because at the end of the day, guys, you got to listen to your body. Your body's giving you signals of what not to do. And that's what pain is, right? Pain is just a signal to you. Same thing with emotions. Emotions are just, uh, fuck, what are they? They're signs. They're, they're, they're cues to how you're feeling and whatnot. But that's a topic for another hand. Without further ado, it's fucking gym time. I was talking about how last, or rather I was talking on last back bicep day, but how I'd rather do the preacher curls on the play loaded machine, so I might as well do it today to get a little bit of uh, insight on how it feels. And I've already completed a couple sets here, and I will tell you guys one thing I am realizing that I feel a lot more on this particular one, which is the play loaded rather than the cable loaded, is a feeling more of an emphasis on my forearms. Perhaps it's because I am going a bit heavier. I'm not doing drop sets like I was last week when I did this, but I am feeling more of an emphasis on my forearms, which is good. I'm still feeling it on my biceps, 
but it is more of a compound movement and it makes sense really. I mean, if you're hitting that full range, you are gonna be working your forearms to a certain point, right? Because I'm all the way here, like for a certain amount of time there, my biceps really aren't being worked. So getting past that midpoint is more so forearm based than it is bicep based. But I'll also mention, I've been saying how my shoulders sore. I notice more so when I get to my partials, I kind of try to cheat it, which is by leaning forward a bit and using momentum or rather leverage to get it up. But by doing that, it's really emphasizing the deltoid there. So it's hurting. So I mean, I really have to pay attention to that and avoid doing that because I did do that, I guess, last set and I felt it quite substantially on there. So I guess, like I said earlier, I gotta really make sure I'm paying attention to it because it is injured. And in order for me to let it heal, I gotta make sure I'm playing within the bounds of it. So definitely want to avoid doing the leverage. And all around, I mean, the leverage is just to get those final few reps to get a little past where I wanna be in terms of failure. But it's just gonna to result to me getting injured. So I obviously the stimulus to fatigue ratio, there's more so in the fatigue element, more so in the injury element than fatigue, but still. So I'm super setting here. Doing some preacher curls heavy. I have uh, two 25s, a five, and a 45. So in total, 100 pounds here on the plate loaded. And it's pretty, pretty, pretty difficult. But after completing this, I'll pick up some dumbbells, 25s, and I'll uh, do 12 reps of that. I'm gonna take a little pause in between, which is most likely gonna have to happen. I will. That way, I can get those 12 done. And similarly, like I said, I'm paying attention to my shoulder because it is injured. It is a little sore. Even just doing this is a little sore. So I really do need to pay attention to it. And it is hard to, to you know, kind of mitigate the amount of uh, effort I put into things because of the effect it has on my shoulder. But you got to do what you got to do, right? And in order for me to push myself the way I want to, I have to let it heal fully so I don't put myself out of the gym for months, right? So let's just remember that. Let's get right in there. Right into the dumbbells. Forearms are definitely feeling it, as I said. The play-loaded uh, Preacher Curl machine definitely emphasizes the forearms a little bit more than the cable. I also want to mention, because a lot of people who do curls pick up a weight that they, they, they can't necessarily control. I mean, when you get to the final portion of your set and you want to get a little bit extra in, it's okay to do a bit of a swing motion, but all around it should be avoided as much as possible. And what I mean by that is, you know, people will curl, this is like a regular curl, right? But then you'll see people go like this, right? And I've done that time to time, right? If you want to do a little bit heavier, you do call those cheat curls, right? To get a little bit heavier weights, so you get more used to heavier weights, which is all right. But with dumbbells, I mean, unless like that is your objective, all around, you really do want to mitigate the amount of usage of a swing you do, unless you know that you're lifting a heavier weight that requires you to do that. It is good though, it is a good tool to have when you're trying to get past that mark of failure, but I'm gonna do this for four sets. That is set number two, so I got two more. Let's get it done. Okay, we're gonna work into some back now. Gonna be doing some barbell rows. Haven't done barbell rows free weight in a little bit. Definitely a good exercise to do. I like putting on heavy weights. Testing the water, see how much I can lift. In the right way, of course. I don't wanna hurt myself. So I did do a couple warm up sets, rather sets in general, just to gauge how my shoulder would feel after doing this, because I figured it might hurt a little bit, but to be honest, feeling pretty good. So definitely wanna keep an eye on it, especially when I get into this set. I did a. Uh, I did one set so far of the weight that I'm gonna be doing, which is 185, and it felt good. I did it for 10 reps, getting that full range of motion, because I do really, really want to emphasize that depth element on this sort of exercise. But definitely some partials come into play near the ending of it. And I also recommend wearing a belt, because the belt's definitely gonna help you, especially with keeping your posture in place and whatnot, your form rather locked. And also mitigate the uh, lower back effects. I do feel like with this particular exercise, my lower back gets fatigued. But let's get right in it. Oh. 
I'm not gonna lie, at the final reps there, I was starting to feel a bit in my shoulder. So I'll probably call it quits after that. I did do a good amount of sets prior to doing this. I wanna get into a bit of a superset, incorporating pull-ups and biceps, so let's get into that. Okay, I'm gonna be doing a superset of the barbell curls. I was gonna say lunges, kind of twisting my words there, but I don't like doing too, too heavy on this because as I was saying with the dumbbells, do start to get to more of a cheat curls, which is, of course, using leverage to get it up. So I picked just the tens on both sides, that way I could control the weight and do a full range of motion that I'm looking for. Because again, I mean, cheating's good if you're trying to go a bit heavier, but for what I'm trying to do today, it's not really optimal. I don't really care to go that heavy. I just want to get more so enough stimulus to my muscles, control it as best as possible, and also just make sure my form's correct. Because again, when you start to leverage yourself, your form's kind of being compromised, right? And it can build bad habits, especially if you start doing it when you first start lifting, because you are building the foundations. But of course, anything you can learn, you can unlearn. So, I mean, it's not necessarily a bad thing if you did choose to do that, but doing it the right way is the best way to build a foundation. And then of course, doing those sort of movements is more of an advanced movement, because then you, you know, obviously implementing that into your workouts is something that will benefit you in terms of being able to lift a bit heavier. But at the same time, there's more, there's more of a re uh, injury to reward ratio in those sorts of movements, especially for new guys. Because again, you can injure yourself, especially if you're doing it incorrectly. Like if I start to do this and you know, whatever, I fling back or whatever, I tear a muscle, it's just gonna end in me being out of the gym for a while. And especially when you first start working out, that is the last thing you wanna do. Because you gotta be able to listen to your body. But let's get right into this. Make sure the camera angle's set up correctly. I think next I'm gonna add fives just to increase it because I was able to do 15 there, but let's go right into pull-ups. I got the van on standby. Get four more in with the band. I might need a bigger band. I'm not gonna lie, that super set of the pull-ups and curls took a lot out of me, especially on my forearms. Because doing those curls, because it's fixated, I really feel a lot of tension on my forearms. I didn't have to do pull-ups after is a big emphasis on your forearms as well because it is a synergist muscle being used as it is with majority of back movements. But as said guys, my shoulder is sore and we're gonna be working in some lat pull-downs. And with lat pull-downs, I feel it the most. So after doing my first set, I was able to gauge that. Doing like a mid-range partial is the best way to effectively hit my lats without putting any strain on my, on my uh, shoulder here. Because when I get past a certain point, I feel a big strain. Even just by doing that, I feel a big strain on it. So I'm just going to be doing halfway and a lighter weight. But I am super setting with rows, some uh, mid grip rows, I would say. I tried the long range, but similarly feeling it on the shoulder. So it is a limiting thing, but I need to make sure that I'm not pushing it to injure it, right? Because last thing I want to do, guys, like I keep saying, is be out at the gym for an extended period of time because I didn't listen to my body, right? But with the rows, similarly to the lat pull down, I'm gonna be doing a lighter weight because as I said, guys, I gotta, I gotta gauge it, right? And I feel like doing a lighter weight puts less resistance and need to use other muscles to compensate because if you guys aren't aware, sometimes when you're lifting a certain heavy weight, you're actually not able to lift it with the muscle you're trying to target, such as like a lat pull down, to the point where you start using your forearms a lot more, sometimes you use momentum, right? You'll do certain things to allow yourself to lift the weight which creates a muscle imbalance and also, in this case, puts a bit of strain on a muscle that I don't want to put strain on. So I'll just do a bit more volume in terms of like moving around. Like I'll do 12 reps of each, but like very limited rest in between, like go exercise to exercise, back and forth, 
I won't lie, even now, man, my shoulder's a bit sore, so I really will gauge it. I might have to cut it short if needed because of the limiting factor in my shoulder, which plays with me mentally because then I feel like I'm not getting an effective workout, but I'd rather work out and get something than nothing because my shoulder's fucked up. So we'll go a little lighter here, a little slower, and see how it feels. Similarly with the lap pull down, let's get right into this. So you don't feel it now. I do need to adjust the camera though. This is the struggles of being alone when you work out and you're recording. I feel like when I lean into it all the way, it's when I really do feel an emphasis on it. Honestly, more so with the partials, I feel like they're the most optimal. So I'll probably stick within that range. Cause even with this, that full stretch, I felt it. So again, I'm gonna gauge my workout based off how it's feeling. Maybe perhaps throw in some other movements that don't compensate using that as much, but let's get this shit done. I'm not gonna lie guys, so I was gonna call it after doing those two exercises, the superset there, but I figured I would get one more in. Fortunately, it plays in my mind that I'm not working hard enough because of my shoulder being a little sore and I feel like I could be doing more. I feel like I should be pushing myself harder. But I mean, those are just the mental things you gotta ignore because at the end of the day, your body is injured for a reason, right? There is a reason for it. It's a signal to you that you need to allow that area to recover. And uh, I mean, I can't, I have to practice what I preach, right? I mean, I can't just fight through it, take a painkiller and ignore it. Thankfully, it's not a big problem because I mean, if it, if it was struggling to do any of this shit, that'd be a problem. But it's only when I get really past, like right here, and even now I'm not really feeling it too much. If I go about the shoulder level, I feel it right, right about here, right about there. And I'm not sure exactly what it is. I mean, I'm not, I can't really diagnose that. I'd have to go to someone professional for that. But I'm gonna finish off this last set here with some rows. I'm gonna do this till failure. So I'm gonna be obviously doing partials because as I said on the other exercise, when I go for that full length, that's when I start to feel it the most, which is odd because as I said, I feel it the most there. But even just doing that, I'm feeling it a bit. It's something here. I really don't know what it is. I'd like to know what it is. Perhaps I'll go to someone if I start to feel it over a longer duration. But for now, we'll have to work at a lower percentage than I'm used to. <laughs> Should be a little difficult, especially tomorrow because tomorrow's chest day and you know how I like to be on chest day, but Let's get into this set. This will be the last set, finishing off strong. Like I said, I'm gonna be going till failure. And now the failure is gonna look a little different than it typically does because once I get to a certain point where I feel my shoulder being sore, that's when I'll have to call it. So it's also either to failure or obviously my shoulder being too, too injured to where I'm gonna kind of injure it even further if I continue. But again, I feel like I didn't do a whole lot today. I feel like I didn't work as hard as I kind of wanted to, but at the end of the day, I got to remember I'm injured, so obviously can't work at the full capacity and something's better than nothing. So even if like, for example, you guys only have like 20 minutes to work out, doing a 20 minute workout is better than doing a no workout. And sometimes people, oh, I have 20 minutes, so I can't really get a workout and get a lot done in 20 minutes, right? As long as you put your mind to it, but no excuses here. Let's get this shit done. I'm feeling it in my shoulder, man. I might lower the weight. Let's lower the weight and see how it feels.
I felt better. I think it's the hand position. I'm gonna lower the weight again. Drop it one more time. Shoulder is definitely a limiting factor. It's not too fatigued, but I feel a stats. I definitely feel like a strain on it. Thankfully, I don't feel it afterwards, but when I did the lap pull downs earlier, when I went too high up, I was definitely feeling it afterwards. So I definitely need to be take precautions around it. Perhaps I'm gonna do an Epsom salt bath or something like that. I need some ice packet or some shit like that. Just try to try to make it recover a little bit quicker. I definitely pay attention to it and not neglect it because that's how things get worse when you fucking neglect it but again i don't feel like today was maximum capacity and that plays in my mind right and i'm sure it'll play with your guys mind especially when you're used to working out at higher intensity and pushing yourself because as i always say you're not really experiencing resistance which is the purpose of resistance training if you're not pushing yourself so i i gotta be a, an example to you guys that like you do have to overcome those thoughts at times Similarly to overcoming the thoughts of not wanting to go to the gym, you have to overcome the thoughts of wanting to go harder even though you're injured and just ignoring your injury. But I feel like this is this is pretty good. I mean, I wouldn't say I went to full failure there, but I definitely went to a certain point where I felt like I get to it. If I continued doing it, I would definitely feel it a little more on my shoulder. Those last couple reps, I felt like I was going all the way and just kind of using a bit of momentum, which sure I could see back at the footage. But the partials definitely feel like a good range for me. Hopefully it feels better for tomorrow's chest day. But we do have another back and bicep day this week, which means that that day is gonna be, I wouldn't say a makeup day, because like I said, today was still a good workout. You know, as long as you're pushing yourself and those pull-ups to but barbell curls were definitely, uh, definitely a good superset. Definitely something you guys should try doing, but let's get out of here. You know, it's so funny. Part of the reason why I feel like I didn't do enough fucking shaking the camera bruh it's all that rain guys it's fucking pouring again but part of the reason why i felt like i didn't work out as hard as i could have or rather why it kind of plays with my mind why i didn't work out as hard as i know that i can when i'm 100 percent how i typically do it's because i feel like i'm gonna lose the gains and that's fucked to think of man like you're not gonna lose the gains if you take a day off to rest or if you mitigate the amount of effect or uh, weight and shit you do or intensity because of your shoulder being injured or whatever being injured, you're not going to lose the gains. <laughs> and I'm telling you guys this because I'm basically talking to myself, but even though I say this, it's so hard. And I understand, you know, with anyone who goes through something of this form, uh-oh, got a little alarm going off. <laughs> I have such a bad memory, guys. I set alarms to remind myself of things, but... I feel like I could have worked out harder, you know, obviously, like I said, those things play with your mind and whatnot. And it's funny because it's like the complete opposite of not listening to your inner bitch. And then like, it's so hard to, to hear that I shouldn't work out as hard as I know I can. And then with the intensity and whatnot, because I'm injured and I'm in my mind, I'm like, is that my inner bitch talking? But that is not your inner bitch talking. I'm going to tell you guys that right now. That is your brain talking to you saying, Buddy, your fucking arms sore. You can't work out that hard. And that's hard to listen to, man, because, you know, obviously when you're at the gym, you want to work hard. You want to leave feeling fucking satisfied that you killed it. But sometimes, you know, in terms of today, I got to feel the satisfaction knowing that even though I'm injured, I still got done what I could get done. And that's the beauty of it. And I'm not going to lose the fucking gains, man. The gains aren't going to go anywhere. I mean, muscle atrophy. 
think it's called atrophy or something like that. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. I think it takes about three to four weeks. So it'll take a bit of time and you know, muscle memory is a big thing. And I mean, fuck, if, if I continue to injure this shoulder, then obviously that'll occur because I won't be in the gym. Now I'm going to work out some more, hitting chest and whatnot. And uh, I'll probably like leg day, I felt nothing on my shoulder. Shoulders, I'll be taking a rest for sure. The shoulders are going to have to take a little bit of a break, but chest is a little bit worrisome because of the depth element. I think part of why it's injured is because of the heavy weights that I did hitting the depth. So I'll probably more focus tomorrow on machines. Still like hitting that depth, but not as deep as I want to go. More so partial, similarly like today. But if it is really fatigued, guys, I'm going to have to take a break. I'm going to have to take like a day off, a rest or whatnot. And do more so cardio. Perhaps I'll come in and do some cardio because I am going to be starting cardio soon because the cut is going to occur soon. But the gym community is beautiful. I want to take a special second here to shout out all you fucking people watching this video, all you people subscribed, all you people liking the video and drop it a comment. I appreciate the support very, very much. And shout out Corey. Corey, I just met on my way out of the gym. He came up to me, said, oh, I seen you recording. What's up, bro? Fucking subscribe, showing the support. I appreciate the support from every single one of you guys. But I want to take a second to shout out Corey. Shout out baseball fan too, because that guy is the legend, guys. I mean, I have to give him some special credit. He's almost at 100 comments totally total on this channel and baseball fan I got something special for you when you hit 100 comments brother I'm gonna keep it a little disclosed for now but I got something special for you so hit that sub button guys we're on to 1,000 subscribers by the end of April we are at 910 90 more to go 90 more guys I appreciate the support very very much drop a comment down below what you guys are getting done today because today is a beautiful day and you still got to get done what you got to get done regardless of the fucking rain fuck the rain but still fuck your excuses even more <laughs> hit the post notification bell so you guys never miss a video guys get done what you need to get done like I said have a blessed day and find your impetus goodbye